Your horse's frame is very important because it's what allows you to really control your horse. And it also is what allows you to help your horse use their body in the most efficient and comfortable manner for them. If your horse is either inverted or curled, it's going to be difficult for them to do transitions, to do any type of lateral work. And they're, since they're not going to be using their top line, it's uncomfortable for them to have you sitting on their back. So, hello everyone. In today's video, we are talking about how is your horse's frame? You might notice I have a Dr. Pepper here, so stick around. I'm going to teach you what a Dr. Pepper can has to do with your horse's frame. Also, check out the description box. There's a free PDF for you to download and fill out as I go through this video to really help you start to identify and assess your horse's frame and to teach you about contact and connection and roundness. We want our horses to be round. We want our horses to have a nice frame because it makes them more rideable. It's easier to do transitions. It's easier to turn. It's easier to stop. It's easier to go when your horse is round. Not to mention that it's safer. Like when you have roundness and your horse is in a nice frame, it's a lot easier to get them to relax and stay focused with you. So step one, find a photo of you riding your horse and then check your horse's frame. To start out with, we're just going to focus on their neck, kind of like from their shoulder up. And yes, when we talk about roundness and connection, it's about the whole horse's body, but you can get a pretty good idea just by looking at the frame of their neck. So when you look at your horse's frame, if what you see is that their nose is a lot in front of the vertical, this is what we call above the bit. Okay, so this is above the bit. You can see how Kensington's nose is sticking out. You can also see how this under neck muscle here is a bit more protruding and kind of poofing out. Um, for me, the rider, what I see is it looks like his head is quite high and his neck is narrow. So he's not engaging this top part of his neck. So if your horse is above the bit, you'll go ahead and circle answer A on your worksheet. Now, the other evasion that horses have as far as the frame is going behind the bit. So this is not an ideal frame because here, what you can see is Kensington's pull is too low. His nose is behind the vertical. He's broken here at the fifth vertebrae. So this is what we call behind the bit. The frame that you want to see in your photo is that you want your horse to be on the bit. So we consider a horse to be on the bit when the pole is the highest point and the nose is just slightly in front of the vertical. Okay, so this is the position that we would consider on the bit. So his pole is the highest point. I want his nose to be slightly in front of the vertical. This is the frame that the judge wants to see in a test. And the reason that we want our horses to have this frame in their neck is not just about the shape of the neck. So kind of the shape of the neck is the easy part. But when your horse is on the bit, you're able to start to get them to engage their hind end and their back. So it, having your horse on the bit is what allows you to achieve connection, which is where the energy is really flowing from your leg to your horse's hind leg, up through their back and to the mouth. If your horse is either above the bit or curled behind the bit, like I demonstrated, What's going to happen is it's going to be really difficult to get your horse to correctly engage their hind end or their top line. So the frame you ride in really is about what you're able to achieve back here and whether or not you can get your horse to engage their hind end. That's question one. Question number two is how much weight do you have in your hand when you're riding? So is your horse too strong? Is your horse too light? Is your horse uneven in the rein contact? Like, are they strong in one rein, strong in the left rein, or strong in the right rein? Or are they just right? Okay, so how much weight should you feel in your reins? It should be the weight of a Dr. Pepper. So it's about 12 ounces. Like, if my horses felt like this all the time, that would be awesome. So go find a soda can, hold it in your hand, and then ask yourself, 
how your horse feels relative to this. Do you have less, less pressure? Like, can you not get any contact? Or is your horse really heavy? Do you feel like you're trying to like, you know, move a mountain or hold up a big rock when you're riding your horse? So this is how much pressure you should have in your reins. Print out the PDF, fill out the worksheet. The question number two is, is your horse too light, too strong, or just right? If you do not have the pressure of a soda can in your hand when you're riding, it's a problem because again, it means that it's really hard to get your horse to connect through the hind leg and work through their back. If your horse is empty in the reins and you can't get any contact, they're always kind of evading and escaping using their hind end. Likewise, if your horse is really heavy and they're pulling on you and super strong, it's because they're not using their hind end. So you're always working towards this ideal of you wanna feel like you're holding a soda can in your hand. And it's a process. All horses start out either too strong or too light or uneven in the contact. And your job is to get this ideal soda can weight in your hand. Question number three is how is your hand position? Are your hands too high, too low with your elbows locked out and straight, or just right? So you want to have a straight line from your elbow to your horse's mouth. And this has a big effect on your horse's frame because when you have a straight line from elbow to mouth, it allows you to establish a steady and supple contact. So this, with this straight line, you can supple with your wrist and your ring finger, you can move your elbow. If your hands are locked out like this, which is probably the most common rider position fault I see, especially when people are trying to get their horses round, it makes your whole arm stiff. So please print and fill out the PDF. There is also inside the PDF a webinar about contact and connection. So definitely you're gonna wanna watch that webinar. It's about 20 minutes long. There's a lot of really, really good information there. And like I mentioned before, your horse's frame is very important because it's what allows you to really control your horse. And it also is what allows you to help your horse use their body in the most efficient and comfortable manner for them. If your horse is either inverted or curled, it's going to be difficult for them to do transitions, to do any type of lateral work. And they're, since they're not going to be using their top line, it's uncomfortable for them to have you sitting on their back. So. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I post a new video every single Wednesday and don't forget to download your special worksheet plus webinar about contact and connection. Thanks so much for watching.